If you're an Android developer, you know how challenging it can be to manage virtual and physical devices in Android Studio. But with the new device manager since the Bumblebee version of Android Studio, managing your devices just got a whole lot easier. In this video, we'll explore all the features of the new device manager so that you can take full advantage of this powerful tool. So if you're just starting with Android Studio, this video is for you. And even if you are an experienced Android Studio user, I would suggest you that you watch this video till the end to make sure that you are aware of all the new features of this new tool. Before we dive into the device manager's features, make sure that you're running the latest stable version of Android Studio. At the time of recording, the latest stable version is Android Studio Electric Eel. Updating is essential because when the Android Studio Bumblebee was first released in January last year, there was a bug preventing the device manager from launching using the toolbar icon. Fortunately, this issue has now been resolved. Now this is out of the way, let's start by launching the device manager. As we saw in a previous video in this series, there are different ways that you can launch the device manager. If you already have a project open, like it is the case here, the most straightforward way is to click the device manager icon in the toolbar. But you can also launch it from the menu by going to Tools, Device Manager. If you don't have a project open, that is you are in this welcome screen, just click on the three dots in the top right corner and select Virtual Device Manager. As noted here on the Android Studio documentation website, for now, from the welcome screen, you can only create and manage virtual devices. That's why here it says Virtual Device Manager and not Device Manager. Now that the device manager is open, the first thing we can notice is that the UI is more adaptable than before, allowing you to dock the device manager in the IDE, as it is now, float it, or open it in a separate window like many other Android Studio tools. This makes it easy to access your devices without obscuring other IDE windows. If we come here, we can see that we have a virtual tab and a physical tab. The virtual tab is basically the old AVD manager with a slightly different design and some new options. This is where you can create new virtual devices and also manage all the Android virtual devices that you have created. By the way, to know how to create new virtual devices, you can watch this video. This area here shows you some general information about your virtual devices, such as the device's names, target Android version, supported CPU architecture, API level, and the storage space they occupy on your hard drive. And then here, we have some basic actions to manage the virtual devices. That is, this play button to launch the emulator, this folder icon to open the device file explorer, more on that later, the pencil to edit the default configurations of the emulator. Click on those three dots to reveal even more actions. Duplicate to create a copy of the selected virtual device. Wipe to completely erase and reset the emulator to the state when you first created it. Cold boots to do a fresh restart of the emulator without using the last save snapshot. We watch this video for the difference between cold boot and quick boot. Show on disk to show where these emulator files are saved on your hard drive. View details to see a detailed list of the characteristics for the selected virtual device. And of course, delete to delete the selected virtual device. Now this folder icon gives you access to the device file explorer. In here, you can explore the different files and folders inside the emulator. You can also upload files to the emulator or download files from the emulator to your computer. For more detail about the Device File Explorer, watch this video. One of the exciting new features of the Device Manager is the ability to pair wearable devices with the selected emulator phone or tablet. This feature allows you to test your wearable apps on a virtual device, eliminating the need for physical hardware. Keep in mind, to pair a wearable device with your emulator, make sure that your virtual device is running Android 11, API level 30, or higher, and has Google Play Store installed. Also, ensure that your wearable emulators run API level 28 or higher. I will do a specific video on how to pair your wearable device to your phone or emulator in an upcoming video, so don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Another thing that is worth mentioning is that other than the system image and the Android version under the device name, some of them are labeled with Google APIs or Google Play. Let's quickly run them to see the difference. 
We'll start with this one with the Google Play. As you can see here, it includes the Google Play Store and all the Google apps like Gmail, Google Maps, Google Photo that are part of the Google API. That means you can use it as if it was a physical device. You can connect with your Gmail account, download apps, and more. This type of emulators provide the most complete experience but occupies the most disk space. If we look at this one, which supports only the Google APIs, we can see that it doesn't have the Play Store included, but has the other Google apps like Gmail, Google Maps. Finally, if we take a look at this one, also known as an AOSP image, it includes neither the Google Play Store nor the Google APIs. It's a pure Android experience without any Google apps. Use this one if you require elevated privileges root, when debugging your apps. For more information on that, see this section of the documentation. The link will be in the description below. So, when creating devices, make sure to select the appropriate one based on your app requirements. For example, if your app uses Google Maps, you need at least an emulator that supports Google APIs. Similarly, if you need to link a reverable device to your emulator, it must have Google Play Store included. A new feature in the emulator window is the organization of emulators into tabs. We won't dive into the details of this new emulator window in this video, but we'll cover it in the next video in the series. So make sure to activate the notification bell to be notified when it's released. That was pretty much it for the virtual tab. Now let's move to the new physical tab. As we can get it from the name, the physical tab shows us a list of all the physical devices connected to your computer. For each device, we have some basic information like the name, Android version, API level, and the type of connection being used to access it. Is it through USB or Wi-Fi connection? For the actions, we have the Device File Explorer to swiftly investigate each device's file system. This trash icon button allows you to remove disconnected devices. It is activated only for disconnected devices. Finally, in the three dot, we can view some more details about the device and also a list of the previously paired wearable devices. As we saw in the previous tab, pair wearable option will open a window to help you pair a Wear OS emulator to the selected physical device. Other than those options, we also have this button that allows you to pair a physical device to your computer using a Wi-Fi connection instead of the USB connection. Watch this video for more information about that. The Device Manager is a game changer for Android developers who work with virtual and physical devices in Android Studio. It's more functional, flexible, and makes managing your devices a breeze. We hope you found this video helpful. And if you made it so far, please give us a like, subscribe, and turn on notifications for future videos.